Today is the seventh month, the third day in the year 2022, and it's the fourth Lord's Day after Pentecost, which the Lord hath made. Let us be glad and rejoice This Roe Wade thing is going to influence the people throughout Europe, and I think even in Ireland. And I, how many guys do you normally have at the Pro Life March? That's an annual march. It's usually like 10,000, 10, sometimes about 7,000 this time. How, was there more like normal? It was pretty much a normal one, yeah. It was about 7,000. Okay. And that's Ireland. It's, you know, it's not like the United States. There's a lot of people here. But I think the Royal Wave is going to inspire them and, and, and scaring these liberals, lefty liberals, they're afraid. Actually. Yeah. And the presence of the lefties was much less. There was, there was very few of them. I, I really do think their, their momentum is sapped. They don't have that them anymore. Yeah, they're, they're, they're back on their heels. And and rightly and they say Roe Wade hasn't gone far enough. We want to ban it all together. But at least it's allowing the states that are banning it to ban it. So it's a good step forward. And Clarence Thomas and all they said are really good. We gotta go all the way and just ban this. Hey, it's murder. You, you, you know? see the Biden and, and the Grisham little thing on on, on the news how Biden all the the the, the, the far right uh, judges, you know, ruling and you know, they're crazy and and then and then uh, Oh, this is a, a atrocious. And oh, you're going crazy. Yeah, yeah, this, yeah. this is like the worst mass. Yeah, no. yeah. You know what that's like saying? These people are the worst mass murderers in the history of mankind. They're murdering millions of babies in the womb. They're murderers, mass murderers, and they're saying we're crazy for trying to stop mass murder. We're crazy. Yeah. We're the nutty ones. For tr- and you see how filthy they are. They do sexual acts, perversions when they protest. They're, they're so freaky. It's, you, you know what? I, I think some of your lefties and Democrats, when they look at stuff like that, they may even get turned off. They're so crazy. They're so fanatical. They're so sexually deviant. It's like, this is disgusting. They scream. They yell. They're retards, really. And talking about that, what do we have this week about the, the poop and Pelosi? Yeah. You can call Pelosi and the poop or the poop and Pelosi. Call it whatever you want, folks. Yeah. But what, how much more proof do you need... Then that she just went to this week, went to Rome. She says, "Oh, I was visiting the San Diego community, and I was in the uh, area of a uh, papal mass." So I, I said, "Why not attend the papal mass?" This was all planned from the very minute that she was banned from receiving Holy Communion in the United States of America by the apostate bishop Corleone. That's one of the good things he did. Though Corleone, he's a feminist though, and he, he, he said he didn't excommunicate her. He just banned her from Holy Communion. So he, he, he wait a second, and he's weak too, but it's still good what he did. He still banned her. So she goes, so I can see she got back the pipeline to the poop. She's got a special hotline to the poop. Oh, poop, this is Pelosi. Pelosi, this is the poop. Yeah, what? What? Don't worry about it. We'll take care of it. Wait about a month or so. Come over to Italy. Make like you're visiting for some other reason. And then just stop it at the papal mass and we'll give you Holy Communion. And, and then we'll shove it in the face of those guys. He's undermining his own bishops, right? So she goes over there this week. And they said, oh, she happened to be in Italy and attending the papal mass. And, oh, well, the Pope, didn't, the Pope didn't give her communion, but one of the deacons did. But he knew about it, and they all knew about it. And he, he didn't say anything about it. And the, the announcers are all mumbles McGee. They, 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 there's a, well, one guy goes, well, uh, he, that doesn't mean he supports abortion. Oh, no. He gave communion to a mass murderer. Pelosi who said they should kill babies up to the moment of the ninth month. That's what she said. And she just came out a couple of weeks ago dancing with drag queens on the stage. And he's giving her Holy Communion. He didn't say anything. The Pope. I don't know what it's going to take for you people to leave that stupid, crazy, blasphemous, ugly, lefty liberal church. I think of all you people like the one person, you know, I'm not going to use her name. She was a city of the conscience and all that. She got all messed up in all the positions and she went back into the V2 church. And said, well, I guess the V2 church is the true church. I'm never going to leave again. He's the Holy Father. I'm always, he's always going to be the Holy Father. And she was militantly pro-life. They used to protest in front of the clinics. What do you think now? How do you like them apples? You think God, this, this woman's a mass murderer of infants and he's given her Holy Communion? Then he goes around and kisses infants. He makes it like he loves infants. He kisses them, love your babies, love infants. I say, get your infants away from that guy. Every infant he kisses, demons go into that infant from him. And don't you kid yourself. That guy's a, an infiltrator. They're, they're offering up human sacrifices in the Vatican, in the back room. That's, he's a good actor. You don't do the stuff he did unless you're a positive infiltrator. Pelosi and the poop. And he's, he's smiting all these other bishops who are 
or at least tell her she can't have Holy Communion, come over here, we'll give it to you. In other words, Rome is more corrupt than even some of your local bishops. But they make you believe the local bishops are corrupt and Rome is innocent, they're holy, they don't know what's going on. The same thing with the German bishops and homosexuality and transgender and the masses they have. He's never condemned them. He doesn't, he's even given her... This is unbelievable. Unbelievable what you're looking at here. And God's getting him to start looking like uh, JP2 now. You know, he's, 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 I call him a basset hound. You know? I'm allowed to do that because when a guy's like him, I denigrate him, I desecrate him. I, I, I wanna, I can, nothing I can say about him, not desecrate him because that would mean he's holy, right? Yeah. So cut that part out. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes, <Mark. laughs> In other words, denigrate them. Denigrate them. You owe me ten bucks. I denigrate them. There's nothing you can't you can't come up with a word bad enough, and you you want to make joke of them. I make joke of them. He's looking like half basset hound, half monkey. And let me tell you something. What the, what more? And then uh, EW ten just announces and doesn't say anything. And I go, well, no, it doesn't mean he approves abortion. And, it, and he says it's in the moral proprio that you could give communion to these people. It's in the moral proprio. And then when they're done talking about it, they're not saying how evil it is. They just mention it like neutral newscast on EWTN. And right after that, they go, oh, the Holy Father says everybody should love one another and forgive one another and don't, hope, don't condemn one another. And then they think that he gave him up there, give him some speech or something, right? What this guy just did is he justified every murder, every abortion that took place, ever. He justifies it. I don't care what his words say. His actions speak louder than words. And he's got the nerve to condemn some other people on the right, like even Trump, and he wanted to build a wall. He says, this man can't be a Christian because he wants to build a wall. This guy's a retard. He's not a retard. He knows what he's doing. He's an extreme, extreme, extreme lefty liberal. Slob. He, it, we're this close for him coming out and saying, Jesus Christ is not the Messiah, and he isn't God. We're this close. And I, I don't know. Here's my point. I don't know if anybody who stays in that church after you see this stuff can ever get out. I don't know. I don't... I don't I, me? Okay, I'm going to tell you what I think. Of course, I could be wrong. I don't think they can get out now. Anybody that's still in the Vatican II church with the use of reason, who's seen what... what the, I mean, What? Is left. You think God's going to turn back after you see all this stuff? And you're still going to go, Holy Father! You're going to call him the Holy Father? Holy Father! How could you do such a thing? He's a mass murderer. He's a pervert. He's a heretic. He's an apostate. He said Jews don't need to believe in Jesus Christ to be saved. They're under a, a, a covenant with God. And he's Holy Father? That's why we have laws. That when a pope becomes a formal heretic or formal schismatic or obstinately publicly immoral, he loses his office because that's akin to heresy. Obstinate immorality in public. It's in the teachings of our church. So you don't have to be burdened by calling him Holy Father. I told this to these apostate brothers up in the St. Benedict Center. And then I said, you guys would have holes in your head from bullets because of what you believe in. You, they're defending the guy. And the pedophilia that's going on He's got pedophiles over there in the Vatican. He, he, he harbors them. Human sacrifices, pedophilia, abortion. This guy's a monster. And if any one of his bishops or cardinals gets a little conservative, he gets rid of them and puts more cardinals in. He did that with a lot of the African bishops because they're pretty much against abortion and homos. And he's angry at them. He got rid of a lot of them in the beginning and he put his own bodies in there, his own bodies. But Pelosi and the poop. The poop and Pelosi. Is this not a snack? And then Biden. He goes over there after they're also condemned to Biden on the abortion issue and all that, and he's, he calls him a good Catholic. If Biden's a good Catholic, then I don't want to be a Catholic. You know what I'm saying? What a scandal is this to conservative Protestants? How are you going to convert these people if you say this is acceptable? The Pope's infallible, impeccable. The way they idolize these popes, even, even real popes, when they were idolized. This is disgusting. I, I, it's unbelievable what's going on. It's one day after another, one thing after another. The guy comes out and says there's no hell. Uh, uh, either people are saved and go to heaven or they disappear. They disappear. They're like, you mean like Star Trek when you go into that thing? <laughs> yeah, do you reappear though? Or you get lost in the middle. You know, <laughs> you know, beat me up, Scotty. And the guy never shows up. Where is he? He's stuck in the ethereal 
ether of the world. He's scattered all over the world. He's everywhere. He's omnipotent. My atoms are like, <laughs> my atoms are all over the earth. He's in cyberspace. <laughs> he's, stuck, he's stuck in cyberspace. Hey, there you go. He's stuck. <laughs> this is what the book teaches because he doesn't want to believe in hell. I go on, I go on, I go on, I go on, I go on and on and on and on again. And I'm going to tell you right now, I don't think there's any hope for anybody in that church right now with the use of reason. I don't think so. I'm not trying to... You want to convert? Fine. I still wish you'd do. But I don't know. I'd rather speak to schismatics, heretics, Muslims, even Talmud of Jews, Hindus, and Buddhists than you guys. At least they don't call themselves Catholic. At least they don't do that. I speak to them. But I... I it's just like we kept saying. I said years ago, you can watch my earlier speeches. Remember, I said, all he said will never accept the altar girls. Uh-huh. If they bring altar girls in, I'm leaving. Well, the altar girls went in and they didn't leave. Yeah. And I said, pretty soon you're going to have pre- women priests up there. They're pushing the women thing, too. Watch the WTN on the women thing. He's putting them to high positions of authority now that were only reserved for men. It's more clo- this close to him letting them go into the priesthood. All right? And you keep saying. I, years ago I said this, and here we are years later, and they're still there. They haven't left after all we're talking about. That witch, that, I mean, you, all you got to do is take a look at her with those drag queens, dancing on the stage with these filthy, stinking, rotten, lousy, freak drag queens, and she's praising them, and they're praising her, and she's saying, oh, she's defending women's rights, or abortion up to the moment of birth. And she goes to the Vatican and receives Holy Communion. <laughs> but it wasn't in the official capacity. Yeah, that's what he said. Yeah, because it was... So, uh, they, 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 first of all, she met the Pope. She did meet him before, but then she, when she received it, it wasn't from a, uh, another deacon. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. So yeah. that makes it okay. Yeah. But he didn't condemn it. Yeah, exactly. He, he didn't say she, she, no, no, no. Because the guy even said, yeah. it's in the motu proprio, yeah. that we got to give them Communion. Yeah. They allow Communion. See, there's that argument. They're, they're fighting. you, you got to give... It goes back to what Brother Ronson had that picture. He drew the picture with the person kneeling at the altar with horns on his head. Um, I was at an SSP 10 Mass in Eddie Stone, Pennsylvania, and this, um, I think he was a Protestant came in, right, with John Maffei. And John Maffei brought him up to the altar rail, and the guy received communion, the Protestant. And this is not a uh, SSP 10 priest said, well, I didn't know, but as long as he makes it to the altar rail, i got to give him communion. As long as he makes it to the altar rail. So you, can you picture like a Hindu break or, or a common Jew breaking to or back of the, of, of the church and the guards are trying to stop him. He kills a couple guards with, a, with his gun, stabs another guard, and he makes it to the altar rail. Okay, he made it. i got to give him the Holy Communion. Is this crazy? Remember Blanco? And the Is it, yeah, they're all like that. Yeah. As long as they, they don't ask questions. Which brought, this is a side note, but I was talking about this the other day and I thought about it. When you look at St. Peter's Square and everybody had, they had these massive masses, something just looks wrong about it, okay, anyway, okay? So you've got these masses where you've got an outdoor mass, you've got 20,000 people, you've got about 1,000 deacons going out and giving communion to all these people. This not right? It ain't right, size. It ain't right! Why is it not right? You don't know who's in that crowd. Anybody can be in that crowd. You don't treat the Holy Eucharist like that. You don't know. Anybody can be in that crowd. They do this all the time. Holy Communion should only be distributed to people in their local parishes by their local priest because they know who belongs to the parish. And they know if somebody comes up to the altar rail who doesn't belong there, they say, no, no, see me after Mass. And you'll see that that's what they used to do. And so the local parish priest knows whose parishioners are. You've got these massive masses where 10,000 or 1,000, 2,000 people are present and they're all going up in a line, like an assembly line, receiving. You don't know who they are. You're not guarding the Holy Eucharist, and you don't care, because they give it to anybody. I told you about that already. Even in the so-called conservative church I went to in Newark, New Jersey, St. Lucy's, they call it the Mafia Church. But you could, at least they kept. I went there because they had statues, and they kept the altar rail and all that. And you nailed down, so it was a little more conservative. Even there, when the Italian priest Father Fowino, he's standing in hell right now, Father Fowino. He gave this Jewish guy... Now, I was the altar boy. So this one Jewish guy would show up, and when he would receive Holy Communion, he would stick his tongue out so... It's like he was sticking his tongue out. Like, it was disgusting. You know what I mean? Stick it right out like he's like... You know what I mean? It, was, it wasn't right. You know? And I said, this like, something... Like, like Einstein. Yeah. I, yeah. I said, this is something wrong with this guy. 
So I went by, I said, Father Fumino, who is that guy? And he goes, he's a Jew. I said, he's a Jew? You mean a Catholic Jew? No, no, he's a Jew, he's not Catholic. And you gave him communion? Oh, well, his wife was a Catholic. And he gives us a lot of money. And every, and every time, after he received communion, he will go back and give Father Fumino a $20 bill. Every time after he received Holy Communion. So one, one time when he did do the twenty the, 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 the twenty dollar bill, that's why I asked him. This is the conservative guy. And he said, his wife is a Catholic, he takes care of So I, I, I gave him Holy Communion. And I said, I'm not I'm not giving him Holy Communion anymore. But he said, then I'll get another get another altar boy. You know. I, I had it out with those guys. Even those guys. Because and, and they knew. I spoke and I said, we're living in the final days. And Father Fulino goes, we can't because I just got a job on a cruise liner as a priest. And I got a, you know. Or no, he said, no, no. No, 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 no. He said, I just bought a new car and I got to pay off the... Yeah. I just, I can't be in because I got a new car and I got to pay it off. But he also, he wanted to be a priest on Royals cruise boats. But look, these are the conservative guys. This is the way they treat the Holy... This is nothing new. This goes back to the 50s to the 40s. This isn't just something new, but it's just gotten worse. Yeah, so I was going to talk about the poop and Pelosi, but here I am talking about it, right? <laughs> because that got us. So, we look at that. We went. I mean, well, what? What? Do you, what? Look. If you know that these priests, like over here in, in the uh, diocese up here by Santa Fe, that there's so many priests abusing people. What they say? There are at least six hundred and some victims. Wow. How many priests? Sixty-five or more? Lot, yeah. They're going bankrupt now. Yeah. Okay. Biggest lawsuit. Biggest lawsuit ever. They're losing their property. Here's my point. Hey, moms, dads, and moms in the uh, in the parish there. This, these priests are molesting your little kids, and they say, "Good, fine, let's keep bringing them," because you can't judge the priest. Remember to be able to don't judge the priest. Mary will take care of it. God will take care of it. Don't judge. Don't condemn. So instead, they're feeding their children. To these priests, and what I say about these parents, they're sat satanic. They themselves are perverts. In one way or another, they're perverts, homos, transgenders, lesbians, hiding their sins or whatever they're doing is really bad. What kind of a parent? If you're a parent, you find out a priest who listens to your kid, I want justice. Either from the state, or the church doesn't give it to the state. If the state doesn't give it, I'm going I'm to stalk them. And I'm not going to get caught. I'm going to try not to get caught. I'm going to get a high-powered rifle and assassinate the bastard. If he molested one of my children, where is this natural law? It's gone. Why? Do you, remember our Lord said the final days are going to despise the fruit of their womb. And these women that have a few kids just to look good in public so they have some status symbol, like uh, Bill Clinton, here, uh, Chelsea Clinton, she's just like a stat. Okay, I got one kid. Here she is. Now shut up and go away. <laughs> Both of them are sexual deviants and perverts, and probably so is a young kid, too. They hate children, they hate humans, they're selfish bastards. All they love is themselves. Only themselves, and they want to be of everything for them. Self-centered, this evil capitalism leads to that, selfishness and greed. <laughs> so, I don't know. What's left? What's left for you people when you see this happening? You know, the Jews were bad too in the Old Testament. I read it. They would offer up idols and offer their kids to the false gods and burn them up in fire. They were so bad. I'm reading like the numbers, uh, what was it? Uh, no, um, Baruch, uh, I think chapter 7 or something. It talks about they were eating their own children. Every, uh, because God cursed them. It, 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 he's saying it. We were so bad, we were so evil that God turned us over to all the curses that the Holy Man Moses said will come upon us if we disobey God. But you can imagine what's going to happen to this church when it falls. But these people deserve it. And my point is, I really don't know. And we're talking about guys like Robertson, and Janice, and Jerry. And the Jerry's out of it, though. Robert's still in there. Uh, but these guys that are still there, I don't know. I mean, we, you know, we pray for them, but I think they're going to have to go on the bottom of the prayer list because I don't, I don't know. Uh, it's a scary thing. My estimation is God turned away from all of them. He not, you're gone. Oh, you're all gone. Let's go look for a priest from the Russian Orthodox Schismatic, at least they're manly, or the Greek Orthodox Schismatic. So let's go get the priesthoods from there. Uh, wait, wait, these people? I don't know. All men are liars. You care about the truth? You love God? You love His Ten Commandments? She's mur mass murdering babies and you're over there kissing her butt? And you kiss Biden's butt? 
What he needs is a kick in his butt. That's where we're going to get our converts from. The Russian schismatics and the Greek Orthodox schismatics, because at least they're manly. But somebody could use... People are always trying to take things out of context. But they can do that anyway. Don't freak. You worry about that, you're yeah. never going to talk. No. You'll be paralyzed. They can figure it out. <laughs> they know about the teachings, you know. I wanted to talk about your pro-life thing, which just led into that. And it looks like uh, Dermot and TJ, they got onto a big fish. Who's the big fish I'm talking about? Anna McCluskey, evidently. And I didn't know she was in my COVID thing, too. Was Dr. Ann McCluskey? Yeah, I don't remember. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. Big fish. It's yeah. A, if the only purpose for you to run into one person, you think that was a coincidence? There's no coincidence with God anyway. Okay? Something's happened or neutral doesn't really matter. That, to me, is a sign from God for you to run into her. And she was listening. Mm -hmm. That's a good sign from God. That, that you know... Uh, and I talk about the detours, but you know, I still don't think there's any hope for them. I don't know. You still hope there's hope for them, but I don't think there's any hope for them. I hope there's hope for them, but I don't think there is any hope for them. Okay, that's something to just put it that way. So you better be scared. I better be like when Jonah. Remember the prophet Jonah? Remember the prophet Jonah? Remember the prophet Jonah? When he went into Nineveh, what did he say? What did God tell him? You're all dead. You're all banned. I'm going to kill everyone of you in 40 days. You're done for because you rebelled against me. Your sins are so bad. They rose up to the heavens. I'm going to destroy every stinking one of you. You're done. That's God's word. But they repented. They went into sackcloth and ash. Even the animals, they put sackcloth on them and ash on their head. And they didn't eat for a couple of... And then God listened and he turned back his decree. So there still is even hope. But, I, it's just, but I'm telling you something. It's a scary thing. You may have approached that position where there isn't. You, just, uh, you know... It, he didn't turn it back. With Noah, did he? We were just talking about Noah today. They all perished. You know? Oh, Noah, he did. Yeah, Noah, they all perished. Yeah. There was no turning back. He now, some repented when they were up yeah, in the mountains, yeah. but he still destroyed them. Yeah. He still killed them. All right, so anyway, that's, and that's a warning to some of these people that are still in that. It's so sickening. And how these people on EWTN and these networks can announce this stuff with a cold stone face. Like, there's nothing wrong with it. They, and you know in the back room, they, they, the boss is telling them, you know, to quit the job. Leave. Ran in a royal. How long do you want to stay in there? Let, let, get out of there. Get out of the place. It's disgusting. What do you want yes, Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, sorry, just a, a quick round of question there. We were talking. How, how many people approximately were, were on earth at the time of Noah? I don't know, but probably a pretty lot, of course. And we know some of them repented because St. Peter says that in his epistles. So they repented right before they died. So it's a slow. It's, think about, picture this, right? It's raining, right? So you get on top of your house. Then you get on top of a tree. Then you get on top of the mount. And you got all that time to think. Hey, Noah was right. Noah was right. Noah was right. We're dead. My God, forgive me. So you had these people repenting and converting before... They were killed by the flood. God still killed them, but they repented and converted before they died. That's St. Peter talks about that. And that's, that's, that's what we say about God can convert people on their deathbed. And a lot of times it takes death, the occasion of death, death coming around the corner to get you to wake up. And some people do. That's so why even St. Peter talks about how Christ went down to preach to those people that were in the days of Noah, that were credulous to Noah's words. But they repented. It's in the scriptures. I got my commentaries on that. But how many people were there? Uh, you know, they say God had people live a long time back then to populate the earth. I don't. That's just one theory or opinion they have because they did live to about a thousand years old. Nine hundred, eight hundred, one thousand, seven hundred, eight hundred, nine hundred. Give it, to give them time to populate the world. But not, what, whatever amount of people were on the earth at that time. But that doesn't make sense. What I just said there. I just thought that this commentary probably is not correct. And why? After the flood, how many people did you have? Eight. Did they live a thousand years? Only, no, only Noah. But no one else did. So that, that, see how you figure things out? So that commentary is out the window. I didn't put that in my commentaries anywhere. But now, that I, as we're talking about it now, I'm realizing that's not the reason. Because if that's the reason, God would have let Noah's... Because his sons lived a pretty old age too, but... His son's sons 
to live to a thousand. They died like a hundred. He even said when they got off the ark, yeah. man's days will never be what? Oh, 120. Yeah. 120. At most 120. Which is the most it's like a punishment. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, kind of, wasn't it? Yeah. Because yeah. They, yeah. They, they sin, now you don't get to live for yeah, a long That's time. true. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right. So to, to live in a long time has nothing to do with population. You're right. Kind of like a punishment. Yeah. So, so that's how we come to our, our commentaries uh, on that. Because uh, he didn't, he put them down 125 years. Um, and Jack Lane ain't going ain't to make it to 800. <laughs> oh, Jack Lane, yeah. yeah he can do all, he can, <laughs> Jack Lane can do all his exercises, drink all his health drinks, drink his, his fountain of youth, you know, put your Botox on to make yourself look younger. <laughs> Stretch your face out so you look like a freak, so you think you're looking better, but you look like a freak, and people can see it, which is stupid Facebook people. They're always trying to get the fountain of youth, right? But even if you live 2,000 years, you're still going to die anyway back then. But, I mean, in other words, what, I'm, what he's getting at is, you're thinking modern science is going to... Modern science, they lived 1,000 years old, and they back then, we're better than, they're, they're better than us. Like it's an idea. illusion. Yeah. It's all an illusion. I, if anything, modern science, I think, is poisonous more than helping us. Yeah. Really. Yeah. Go back to the natural medicines God gave us, right? Yeah. I think ma na ma natural medical, I'm not against science. I'm not. I love science. I love pharmaceuticals. I love good drugs like aspirin because it's made all. I'm not, I'm not against all drugs, but there's still, I think, when you weigh in the balances, the good drugs and the good doctors, the bad drugs and the bad doctors, the bad ones come out on the top. Because they've got uh, technology now which can poison the whole human race. Mm -hmm. And, and, it, and it, why do they do it? To make a buck. And you know the Jew always has the antidote. You know, he's got the one where they don't get, you get it, but they're not going to get it. Yeah. But anyway, that McCluskey that you ran into, that was no coincidence. And so, let, is she a Norbis Auto, by the way? Uh, nominal? Yeah, she was she she rejects Francis, so she doesn't know she stayed at the Francis. She's not that you know. I know what you say. Yeah, she don't like him. Yeah. Well, in the beginning, when I started, well, look, at least you got to do this. I'll say this much. And you see, I did it in my uh, lectures, you know, and uh, second coming, I think I did it. Uh, a condemn him is a bomb, a heretic, a bastard, even though you believe he's the Pope. That, there's hope for those people who don't have the deeper dogma that he loses his office. There are hope for those people. Let me say he's a bum, he's a heretic, he's a, he's, he's, an, he's a blasphemer, the whole Eucharist, he's a bum. At least if you're saying that, there's hope for you. But if you cover up those crimes, because you know, she may not have the deeper dogma about the loss of office. See, um, Jeremiah 6.11 I'm full of the fury of the Lord. Oh, yeah. I'm weary from holding it in. Pour it out. I mean, that Pelosi thing was a vomit, right? Was that not disgusting? You see that little wicked witch of the West going over there? How he undermines anybody who wants to even have the semblance of being a true Catholic or conservative minded. What do you think this does to conservative Protestants? Why do you think we attack that guy first and foremost, number one? <laughs> 